Hey guys, Ivan here, welcome to another video, and in this video we're gonna talk about a couple of very interesting things, but we are starting with Ian Valier, who just made an official statement regarding his very poor placement at a Mr. Olympia, he placed 11th, he went from being 7 two years in a row down to 11th, so he made a statement, he made a post about what happened to his overall look, but more precisely to his back. Now, if you guys follow Ian Valier or you follow my channel, you may have noticed that he seemed to have made some progress this year. He was always kind of known for having a weak back, let's say his back was one of his weakest body parts, but earlier this year at Vancouver Pro, it definitely looked improved. As you can see, his back lat spread looked phenomenal, and his back double seemed improved as well. At six and a half weeks out of Mr. Olympia, his back looked like it's even bigger than before, wider. Look at that lat spread, I mean, it looked really big, really wide, it looked like he added some serious muscle to his lats, but on that day, on Mr. Olympia stage, the day that really matters, this is what his back looked like. Underwhelming is an understatement, is putting it mildly. His back looked like he never trained it before. So, there was a lot of speculation as to what happened. And one of the things that people are saying is that he had nerve damage, some sort of injury in his back. Now, is that really the case? It very well may be the case. Look at his back and also his calves back in 2013. He was obviously smaller, but he was sharp, man, he was so sharp, he had crazy details in his lower back, the Christmas tree was just amazing, his glutes were freaking peeled, and they are peeled today, but they were sharper and harder back in 2013 when he was smaller, and I think he had more hamstring separation, and his calves, his calves were existent. These days, it is no longer the case. What the hell happened to this guy's physique? As for now, he never really said he had any kind of nerve damage. But how does one lose calves like this? Is it that everything else grew and calves stayed the same? I don't think so. I think something is wrong with his calves. Some kind of nerve damage must be going on there. Similar thing might be happening to his back because, as you can see, with years, instead of getting better, his back seems to be getting worse. Now, this is the statement that Ian made. He made this post. These photos were from four weeks out of Mr. Olympia. And so he says, well, there's certainly a big difference between nerve damage and bad posing and flatness. Looking back at this look at around 272, at 4 weeks out, glutes already tight with lines and fullness, muscularity, much better than what I displayed on stage. Leaves me curious to what it would look like going on stage much closer to this look. Chasing for a little extra glute to sacrifice this level of muscularity just can't be worth it with my physique. 2023, I want to show something different and really properly display the level of muscularity I know I have. There's a lot of work to be done on my part in terms of hammering down my posing to get that level of comfort and to display my physique at its best, but I'm excited and hopeful for 2023 and I will not get on stage until 100% confident I can display my best. So as you can see in these photos, at 4 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, his back did look bigger, it definitely did look wider and I think it looked the best that it ever looked. So if this translated to the stage, if he looked like this on stage, this big, this wide, without really going for crazy conditioning, being conditioned like he is right here, I think this would do better. I think he would do better on Mr. Olympia stage. But again, it's not the same when you take photos under perfect lighting in the gym and when you step on the stage. So I don't think he would look this good on stage, but he's back and he overall looked better at this point than he did on stage, so I kind of believe him, I think he was flat and his posing was horrible, I don't know if you guys saw his posing routine, but it was really hard to watch this, look at his face, he was struggling to hold the poses, he was clumsy in the transitions, uh, he looked like he was gonna fall down any second, he was so uncomfortable, his face looked like he was struggling, he did not have the confidence, he reminded me a lot of Paul Dillette, and I gotta say, it's such a shame for somebody who worked so hard the entire year not to be able to present the physique in the best light possible, so that's definitely something he needs to work on, he acknowledged that, and what he's gonna do about his back, I have no idea, I don't know, is it just flatness, 
or is it more to it? Look at his back. Compared to everything else, it is seriously underwhelming. I don't know if it's actually nerve damage or some kind of injury. It could be, but he says it's simply flatness and posing. And I hope that's the case because I'm a big fan of Ian Wallier. But this addition of Ian, this display of his physique at this year's Mr. Olympia was rather disappointing. And again, that's mild way of putting things. I think it was pretty disastrous. So I hope he can fix some things. And I hope, look at his posing. I hope he did not really suffer a nerve damage injury. I hope it's just what he says, flatness and posing. That is something that is fixable. We'll see the next time we see him on stage. Mr. Olympia finished like a week ago and Nick Walker is already in the gym, training hard, being focused, unlike the majority of these bodybuilders. Most of them, the ones that did well, are traveling right now, having fun, doing appearances like Heidi Chopin, like Derek Lansford, like Big Ramy. Nick Walker is already in the gym, training hard, looking ridiculous. As he said in that Q&A, he's not gonna be doing the Arnold Classic, so he's gonna be focusing on Mr. Olympia. And now that he's back with his former coach, Matt Jensen, I'm pretty confident that his off-season is going to be very productive. He doesn't look like he went off of the gear. I know, I wouldn't be able to notice, it's only been a week, but I heard from many Matt Jensen's clients that he keeps them on staff after the show to utilize the rebound as best as possible. And you saw that with Nick Walker last year, how much progress he made in those rebounds after the, after the USA's that he won, after the New York Pro, and I would say after the Arnold Classic, and then at the Mr. Olympia, after the Mr. Olympia, he kind of stopped working with Matt Jensen. With Dom Super Sliced, he made a lot of gains, like he got bigger, but uh, when he died it down, it seems like he didn't really progress as much as I thought he did. So now with Matt Jensen, I think he's not going to bulk as hard. I think he's going to work on the details and he's going to stay very, very lean. Look at this, I mean, he looks ridiculous right now, but with a whole year of training really hard, and with Matt Jensen's watchful eye on him during this time, I think he can make a lot of progress. And even though people don't really expect him to win the Mr. Olympia anymore, most people have signed him off because of his structure, because Derek Lansford, for example, has a much better structure. I still think he can bring a lot to the table. I think he can outmuscle Hadi Chopin if Hadi is a little bit off. And I think he can beat Derek if Derek doesn't really bring it. But again, these guys are coached by Honey Rambert, so <laughs> I don't know about that. Matt Jensen is a great coach, arguably his second best coach in the world. I think he just surpassed Chad Nichols and Milo Sharchev. Currently, I would have him as my second best coach in the world. He has a 212 Olympia champion and he has a top 3 open division bodybuilder. But then Hani's current roster is just insane. He has the Mr. Olympia champion Hari Chopin, the runner-up Derek Lansford, and a classic physique champion Chris Bumstead, of course. And I'm not even talking about his previous success. Like last year, Derek Lansford beat Sean Claridin in 212 and he won the Mr. Olympia. And let's not even talk about Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, and so on. But currently, even today, currently, Hani Rambert is the best coach in the world without a doubt and as you can see right here on the right there are two of his clients Derek and, and Hadi and Nick is on the left. Now as you can see they both have better structure than Nick but Nick is really muscular and I'm thinking now that he's back with Matt he is going to pack on some real tissue in the next off season. I think he's going to improve his imbalances. I think he's going to grow certain body parts that will make his proportions look better and his waist look smaller. I'm sure he can do that. And when he does that and he comes super conditioned, more conditioned than the other guys. And if these two guys coming off, which is again not very likely because of Hani Rambert, but let's say it happens, maybe they sleep on the diet or something like that happens, you never know, then Nick Walker can edge them out and again win the Mr. Olympia. I still believe he has a chance, not super high chance, but there is a possibility. If you guys disagree, you can tell me down below. Oh yeah, another very interesting thing here is take a look at these guys' lats. Take a look at Hadi's lats and Derek's lats or Terrace muscles. Look at how much more muscle they actually have in that area and they have some some kind of bumps unlike Nick. Is it that Hani Rambert is giving these guys Sintol or are they injecting gear in their lats 
or is it something about their training they're trying to focus this area i don't know what it is it does add to the look their lats pop more they look rounder and i think it is something that nick needs to improve if he wants to compete against these guys he needs more lats especially in the front poses like absent eyes lat spread and this one front double bicep and lastly horse md also known as marcelo d'angelis started working with milos sharchev he's his new coach what can horse md really do in the open i don't think he can do much not in a year maybe in like five years but right now he is way too small he barely made the weight for classic physique he did not do it successfully he felt really ill while trying to do it and he said he's never going to do that again so he's definitely going to be doing the open with milos archiv now but you know in the open those guys are freaking monsters and this is what marcelo d'angelis looks like right now i don't think this is comparable to the likes of nick walker or even Rafael Brando, his fellow Brazilian. I don't think Marcelo D'Angelis can actually challenge guys like Rafael Brando. And Rafael is 10th in the world, 10th at the Mr. Olympia. That's right, that's a huge achievement for him. But Marcelo, I don't think he can actually... I don't see him winning a pro show, not this year or next year. If they start the prep right now, let's say they are, I don't know, let's say five months out of some shows uh, in like March, April or uh, may i don't think there is enough time for him to progress that much to actually win a show and to get a mr olympia not in such a short time span if they do like a two-year off season and then they prep then who knows anything is possible but as for now this is not really exciting news it's interesting that these guys are collabing but can they really do a lot in six months or something like that I don't think so, but I would love to hear Milos convince me otherwise. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye.